4.4 properties of logarithms. So we're going to go through some properties of logs today and we're going to talk about how to condense and how to expand these um, logs. Okay, so some properties that you need to familiarize yourself with. Product property. When I have log base b of m times n, we can expand that to be log base b of m plus log base b of n. The quotient property says if we have log base b of m divided by n, we can break it up into subtracting those. The power property. What this says is if I have log base b of m to the p, all we can do is we can move this power out front and we get our expanded version, p times log base b of m. The log of each side, okay, m equals n, implies that if I have log base b of m equals log base b of n, then we can just zoom in and say, well, that means m equals n. Okay, the, the arguments have to be equal. All right, and uh, the vice versa goes the same way. If I have two equations where the log bases or the logs are equal, same base, all right, then we can zoom in, set those um, arguments equal to one another. So what we're going to do is we're going to use these properties to expand the following expressions. So let's look at this first example here. Okay, so what we should notice is we've got multiple variables inside. So the first thing we want to do is break this up. So I notice that we have log base 5 of x times y squared. So that is our, our product property. Okay, so we're going to split it up. It's going to be log base 5 of x plus, since we're multiplying those arguments, log base 5 of y squared. But now we have this power here, this y squared. That's our power property. We can move that as a coefficient of this log base 5 of y. So we can do that, and we get our final answer here. Log base 5 of x plus 2 times log base 5 of y. Let's look at part b. ln, remember that's natural log, of e times the square root of y over z cubed. So we've got some multiplying going on and we've got some dividing going on. So the multiplying things get broken up with addition signs. The dividing argument gets broken up with a minus. So what's that going to look like? Well, it's going to look something like this. We're going to have ln of e, okay, plus the ln of the square root of y, because that takes care of this numerator portion. But we're dividing, so then we have to subtract ln, natural log, of z to the third power. Well, one thing we should keep in mind is that the square root of y is really like saying y to the one half, okay? So we can, we can clean things up. The other thing we have to kind of do a side note of is this ln of e. Remember, ln of e is like saying log base e, okay? Log base e of e. Well, remember, when the base of your log is the same as the base of your argument, you're simply left with your power here. So this whole thing really just goes to 1. So we really have a natural log of e. It simplifies to be 1, okay? Then what we can do is we can move this power of 1 half out front in front of this log, so it becomes plus one half ln of y. And then we have this power that we can bring out front as well, and we get minus three ln of z. So here's the fully expanded version, all right, um, of this log. Now we're gonna do the reverse. We're gonna use the properties of logs to rewrite each expression as a single log with a coefficient of one. That just means we're going to condense these. So let's take a look at this first example. The first thing we always look for before we try to combine logs together is I look for coefficients. We notice here that we have a coefficient of two. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move it back to the argument. With this log, we have a coefficient of one half. So again, we're gonna move it back to the argument, okay? So it becomes, ln of x squared plus ln of x plus 4 to the 1 half, okay? Since we're 
adding these two logs together. That means when we condense them to one log, I only write one log, ln, and then our arguments are gonna be multiplied. So it becomes ln of x squared times x plus four to the one half. Well, another way to write x plus four to the one half is simply saying the square root of x plus four. All right, so our final condensed version is the natural log of x squared times the square root of x plus four. This next one is a, is a good hefty problem, but let's start with the basics. I go through each of my log terms, okay? And I look for any coefficients. So I've circled that in green. That's the only coefficient other than one that we have. So this three needs to be moved back to our argument, the power of our argument. So now that brings us to this line right here, okay? So we still have log base five of x squared minus four plus log base five of y cubed minus x minus two squared. So how are we going to condense these? Well, let's make it one single log. What is our argument going to be? Well, since I see an addition sign here, try to zoom in a little bit. Since I see an addition sign here, that means we're gonna multiply these two arguments together. And since I see a minus sign between these two logs, that means this portion of the argument is going to go down in the denominator. So we're gonna divide. So what is that going to look like? Well, it's going to look like this, eventually, okay? So we combined these two. I kind of did it in two steps, but talked about it in one. So we combined these two by multiplying the arguments, okay? And we're still subtracting this log term. So since we're subtracting this log term, we now have to divide by this argument. So notice I only write log base five once. I have one log term, okay? But we're not done quite yet. What we should notice, if we wanna simplify it completely, is that x squared minus four can factor. So let's go ahead and factor this just so that we combine and simplify our argument as much as we possibly can. So when we do factor that, we get x plus two, x minus two times y cubed over x minus two, x minus two. That's what x minus two squared is, right? Now we still have log base five. So log base five of this entire quantity. And what we should notice then is we can cancel out one of these x minus twos. So then what's our ultimate final condensed log, it's gonna be this right here. Log base five of x plus two times y cubed all over x minus two. Notice I have these big brackets or parentheses around my entire argument. We have one log that's written and we're just condensing the arguments into one, okay? We will definitely go through some practice problems in class, so make sure um, if you have any questions, you ask those. This next section you're going to need your calculator for, so make sure it's handy so you can practice um, doing it on your calculator. So we're gonna talk about something called the change of base formula, all right? So uh, the change of base formula says if x, a, and b are positive real numbers, a doesn't equal one, and b doesn't equal one. So b is our base, a is the argument. What we can do is we can use what's called the change of base formula so that we can evaluate this and throw it onto our calculator, okay? So we're changing it to a base 10 log, all right? So the change of base formula says if I have log base b of a, that is equal to log of a over log of b. Notice the bases are not there, if the bases are not there, those are base 10, log base 10, okay? So the way I remember it is the log of your argument, because that's the big guy, over the log of your base. The base goes in the basement, it goes on the bottom of your fraction, okay? So how do we use this? Well, you would typically see evaluate and then round to the nearest 10,000th or round to the nearest whatever it might say. So I would try to evaluate log base three of 18 on my own, but 
it's not so simple. So if I had my calculator, I could tell you what that is equivalent to. So we would use the change of base formula. Log of our argument, which is 18, over log of the base. Now you want to get your calculator out, and what you should see is you should see a log button right next to your number 7. Okay, So that's what you're going to use when you plug this into your calculator. So verify it now that you get this answer, 2.6309. And so then part B, you're doing the same thing. Log of your argument over log of your base. Okay, and again, verify that you get 2.4111. These next two examples are just examples of where logs are actually, or actually come up in real life. Mm -hmm. So um, the Richter scale, you guys have all probably heard of the Richter scale um, for re representing the magnitude of earthquakes, right? So an earthquake has an intensity of I, or with an intensity of I, has a Richter scale magnitude of this. So M is equal to log of I over I naught, where I naught is the measure of the intensity of a zero level, level earthquake. So in actuality, we really don't need to worry about this I naught portion, at least for ours. We could really just focus on the fact that it equals log of I. Okay, it's going to be easier to think about it that way. Anyways, as we look at this first example here, where we're comparing earthquakes, all right, try to follow along, and we'll go through this again in class. So we want to know how many times as great was the intensity of the 1960 earthquake in Chile, which measured a 9.5 on the Richter scale. So that's our M value right there. Then the San Francisco earthquake of 1906, which measured 8.3 on the Richter scale. So right now we're thinking 9.5 to 8.3. That's not a big difference. But remember, this magnitude is represented by a log. So we want to figure out the intensity. And the intensity is our argument of the log. So we need to kind of peel away this and undo that log. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the um, Chilean earthquake. So it was 9.5 on the Richter scale, that's our M. We set that equal to the log of I over I naught. And again, we could just focus on letting it be equal to I. I'm just gonna throw that in there, okay? So then we get, if we convert this to exponential, okay? Our base is a 10, it's not written in. So remember, if the base isn't written in, our base is a 10. Okay, so then we circle our base, we raise it to the other side, and we set it equal to our argument. Okay, so over here we have 10 to the 9.5 over I. Let's just leave it at that. Now, talking about the San Francisco earthquake, we can do the same thing. 8.3 equals log of, and I'll change that to just be I as well. Okay, and then when we convert this, we get 10 to the 8.3 of I, okay? Now, what we wanna do is we are going to divide these, okay? So again, if we're not worrying about the I naught, we're gonna divide the Chilean earthquake information, okay, with the San Francisco. So we're over here now, okay? We're gonna divide these. So when we divide these, the intensities, all right, the overall intensity is going to be equal to 10 to the 9.5 over 10 to the 8.3, okay? Well, when the basis of these exponentials is the same, all we have to do is subtract those powers. Remember those rules? So 9.5 minus 8.3 is 10 to the 1.2. Now, if you were to throw this onto your calculator, you're gonna get about 15.85. So it's, in actuality, it's about 15.85 times as intense than the San Francisco earthquake. So it's a lot different than looking at the 9.5 to 8.3. Those represent the magnitudes, but the intensity is here. That's what you're feeling there, okay? This last example deals with pH of a solution, okay? So looking back up here at the table, the definition of the pH of a solution. The pH of a solution with a hydronium ion concentration, H+, plus, mole per liter is this right here. Okay, so the pH is equal to a negative log of that H plus. So if we're looking at vinegar, 
all right? Vinegar has a hydronium ion concentration of 1.26 times 10 to the negative three mole per liter. We wanna determine the pH of vinegar and state whether vinegar is an acid or a base. Okay, so all we're doing is we're plugging this hydronium ion concentration in for that H plus. That's what that represents. So in that formula, we have negative log of that 1.26 times 10 to the negative three. Well, this is just a calculator problem. Plug that right into your calculator using that log key and verify that you get 2.8996. So now looking at our uh, diagram here, where does that fall on our pH scale? right? So if I'm at 2.8996, I'm right around here. So we can say that's a very, that's getting to be very acidic. All right. And so we've got ourselves an acid. So vinegar is an acid. If you have questions, we'll definitely go over in class.